Hopefully you can see everything okay. I suppose I could look on my phone to see what you can see, but. So today we need to work on getting a fuel system going on the truck. So I broke this out yesterday, kind of cleaned it up. Um, it had like a built-in filter. And I was like, yeah, you probably don't need that. So I took it all apart to see what was inside of it. It was pretty nasty inside. I don't know what I did with it. So I'll probably end up putting an inline filter, but it just wasn't gonna work out. Even still, this kind of sucks because it's eighth inch ports and I need three eighths barbs. So hopefully this won't be a, uh, a bottleneck for me. Hopefully it'll all work like I think it's going to. So I'm on dad duty today. So if you hear the gentle ocean in the distance, it's the baby monitor. She likes to think that she's on the beach. So one thing I don't like to do when working with fuel or oil, hydraulic systems, I don't like using Teflon tape. Uh, whoever did a lot of the work to this truck before me used Teflon tape on a lot of things. And uh, like especially the dump bed, when I took that, the hydraulic system for that apart, that there's a little screen, a pickup screen inside there and it was just caked with Teflon tape. That's part of the reason I don't like using that for to use like a pipe dope like this, but just make sure you, you read it to make sure that it's, uh, it'll give you a list of, this one's recommended for all sorts of different things and just make sure you got gas and oils, diesel fuels, that way it doesn't break down, with the, the uh, fuel doesn't break it down. But, so I'm gonna try to get some of the, I got most of the Teflon out yesterday with a pick, but I'm just gonna blow it out real quick, see if, get anything else out of it. Without waking the baby. I tried it out yesterday and I was down here like, it was pretty much nap time was over anyways. And I just kind of wanted to see like what would wake her up and what wouldn't. I was down here running a grinder and she, her room's right above us here. So I was down here running a grinder and she's still out cold. So that should be good. So I need to get this fuel system done so I can get the truck running so that that way we can build air pressure and build the rest of the uh, emergency brake thing, you know, because I got to kind of figure angles and different crap. Brass fittings aren't cheap. I'll tell you what, you go to Lowe's and spend like $80 and get like four, four brass fittings. It's always upsetting. Kind of a goofy setup, but I guess it'll get the job done, right? All right, pump's ready to rock and roll, I guess. Just gotta find somewhere in the truck to mount it. I'm just gonna get power to it. Jim's your uncle. So this is the the, uh, the new filter base for the truck. Um, I know a lot of you guys are newer, so I don't know if I even covered it in a video or not. But before I decided to do the engine change, I've been running, I was running the truck on waste oil. That's empty. She's gonna be awake now. I wouldn't worry about that. That was just my uh, welding gas cylinder. One of these days I'll build like a cart or something so I don't knock it over every time I do something. Like I was saying, I was running the truck on waste oil so I have like a whole waste oil filtration system in my basement and uh, this filter housing is exactly what I need except that it doesn't have the uh, hand pump on it. And unlike the other one, this one actually has 3 8 NPT ports on it like the listing said. Drew to Daisy, Drew to Daisy, you copy, over. Ten four, roger that, I'll be right up. All right, so now we gotta get the, uh, we gotta get the old filter housing off on that end. And I'll get this one bolted onto there and get the, I'm gonna reuse the same filter since there's no point, you know, it's only a couple weeks old anyways.
All right, guys, so we finished the uh, fuel system. So I put a filter, an inline filter right here, you can see. It's already got some fuel in it. And these usually, a lot of the times, they don't fill all the way up with fuel, which is fine. They'll still have a little bit of air left in them. Over time, it might, that air might come out of there, but for the most part, they usually always have a little bit of fuel, fuel and air in there. So, um, this is a Wix part number 33003. It has 3 8 barbs on both ends. It's like four dollars. So I don't I don't remember how many microns it is though. Uh, and then under here, this is the uh, what we ended up with for the uh, pump. Uh, and I just tied I tied the wiring in with the uh, air dryer heater circuit. So when the key comes on, this will come on. This will run during cranking. Uh, the only thing I did notice was it did not have enough vacuum to pull from the tank when this was all, when it was air in the lines. I had to use my vacuum bleeder to get fuel to the pump in order to push it up the rest of the way. So hopefully that's not an issue, but it seems to be pumping now. So the only thing I don't like is uh, these things are pretty noisy. I think now that it's got fuel in it, it's not as noisy. And when the truck's running, you won't notice it. And then up here, I pulled this plug off, stuck the vacuum bleeder on it till I got fuel up here, and then pumped a little bit out through there. And then I pulled the line off of the head, where the fuel goes into the head, and uh, hooked the pump up. And you can see it's just kind of trickling out of the line there into the bucket. And that will, hopefully that gets fuel through the uh, engines transfer pump and that'll push all the air out of the head when we go to start it. Got to get that line back on and then I'll hook the pump up and pressurize this whole system and then maybe we'll try to fire it up and build some air so I can get working on the uh, brake. Hey guys, this is Drew of the future. I could tell you how I did that. But truck also does time travel now. Anyways, um, I know it seems like I've been chasing this fuel leak forever and uh, a lot of people have been commenting saying try this, try that. I actually did get this issue fixed. I said this before these videos, I, I'm really bad at editing and uh, these videos were shot back in like March, April and it's now the end of June. Uh, it turned out not to even be a fuel leak and nothing to do with the fuel system even. So I appreciate all of your comments and suggestions, but we did get it fixed. Uh, we will reveal that at some point here in the future. Now let the batteries charge up. Try it again. It's starting to smoke, so it's starting to get fuel. Just gotta work the air out of it. All right, so we did get the truck to run. It just took a long time to get all that air out of the head. But well, hopefully now, with that different filter head and uh, lift pump on there, hopefully now it will, that'll prevent the issues with the fuel going back to the tank. But time will tell. So, got it running, it's got air in it. I got our steering fluid leaking there and I got some coolant that started to push back out after I shut it down. So, 